change your appearance once and for all. Hi, I am your host, Guy Cheyenne, and welcome back once again to Rebuild Reality, where as always, we talk about who we really are, why we're here, and how all of this stuff works. Now, changing your appearance comes down to two things, knowing who and what you are and understanding how you work. And I'm going to be reading from my notes because they're awesome freaking notes. And I want to make sure that you guys get all this information, right? So this is kind of really what manifestation is all breaking down to and why we want to learn it in the, in the first place, because we want to understand why we are in control of our experience, why we are in control of our appearance, you know, across the board, because it really breaks down to all of that. Once you understand that you are in control of what you are viewing as reality, then you can change your appearance of anything else, right? So it really kind of comes down to the same thing. So what is going on here? What the hell is really going on here? You know, because all manifestation is like, you can do all these amazing freaking things and people are doing them. And, and you're like, uh, that's not my experience of it. So you want to know, you want to be in on it, right? So what's happening? So your physical body that you don't like right now, that there's something about it you want to change. What is your physical body? Your physical body is actually, in reality, a thought and nothing more than a thought. A thought you are projecting that your mind is picking up on and telling your senses what you see in the mirror because it's of what we believe about ourselves. It picks up on the story we've decided is real about ourselves and this is literally becoming our experience. So what, how the heck does that happen? Because you know, when we're in it, it it's hard to kind of understand how that really can happen because our senses, you know, are telling us like, what do you mean? None of my senses are real. They feel, they, they, you know, I'm touching, smelling, seeing and stuff. And that seems freaking real to me, you know, um, you know, so if that's not true though, and when you look at the science behind that, this is exactly what it's telling us. So if our senses aren't really true, aren't picking up on the true reality, then why is that? Why are, why are our senses lying to us? Well, first of all, in order to have this experience in the first place, we had to limit our senses, our awareness of ourselves for who we truly are. Otherwise, there'd be no game. There'd be no experience. There'd be no adventures. There'd be nothing to discover, nothing to overcome and win over. There'd be no great movie at all. There'd be no movie, no movie, period. You would just know how everything. You'd know how it all ends. You know how it all goes. There would be no one else there to play with, no one else to hold, no one else to enjoy life with, just no other. There wouldn't be anyone else else it would just be you so this is what this experience is about to know more of who you are to enjoy who, who you are that's what it's supposed to be about right originally but this is literally how powerful your mind is that you can create an experience like this that literally isn't real and people who have had near-death experiences totally understand this because when you pull out of this perception of what we think is true and you have a you can see it from another viewpoint, you're like, <laughs> why would I care about that? Why did I worry about it? Why did I care about it? Why did I think any of it was actually real? Why did I think it mattered? Right? But if we don't have that other perspective and this is our only perspective, well, it becomes a bit, it's different because this is all we know, right? So that's why we have to really look at the science behind who and what we are behind the true reality in order to understand our abilities, right? So because we don't see reality for what it is, as I've said, you know, and scientifically, like I always mention, we are seeing less, less than 0.1% of reality, 
So if we're thinking about appearance here, we're talking about our appearance and wanting to change our appearance. Well, we're talking about the eyes, right? So how do our eyes work? Well, if you go and you look it up and you look up more than one article and you actually kind of do some research on it, um, then you'll find out that basically what's happened, uh, which I've also mentioned before, is that light, you know, this is the scientific explanation, the assumption of what's going on here. They say that light comes in through the eyes, through the retinas, because it's not your eyes themselves don't actually see anything. So light comes in through these little lenses, goes to the back of the head, to the optical nerve, where your brain kind of goes, um, I think it's this. And what it's doing, what your brain is doing, is it's actually going off of your assumptions, your beliefs about yourself, what you are saying is there that I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too thin, I'm too fat, my nose is too big, I hate my lips, I want this kind of color eye, I don't want this, I like that. Whatever story you're telling yourself, because the mind's not seeing the true reality, it's going off of what you're telling it. And that's what it's projecting out. That's what it's saying, yep, this is real. Whatever you think it is, is real. Because it doesn't actually really see anything. Which is great because if it's listening to our beliefs, beliefs and assumptions, that means if we change our thoughts, our beliefs and our assumptions, then that projection, that thought about how we think we look is going to change, right? So how to deal with this false perception, right? Well, one, understanding it's not real to begin with, and two, taking steps to change our mind's assumption about itself so let's kind of break this down right so i like to go back into this because it if we have the proof that this isn't real then it's something our mind can grab onto it's something we can be like okay it's not just me making it up it's not just some lady telling me this shit on the on the internet you know that i'm just gonna be like well you know you can look it up and and I think that's great. No one should ever take my word for anything, you know. But um, I like this story, right? So in the 1920s, which is 100 years ago, Einstein and Niels Bohr, one of the fathers of quantum physics, had this kind of argument that was this big thing in science at the time. And it, this was a big thing for decades and decades. In fact, it was still unresolved at the time of Einstein's death in 1955. So basically Niels Bohr said that the nature of basic particles that make up people, you, object, earth, and all space are not subject to the rules of time and space. Now Einstein had a real issue with that because he's like, well, hold on a second. Because if that's true, if particles that make up everything are not subject to the rules of time and space, that means that nothing is real. And he just couldn't, he, he couldn't deal with that, basically. He's like, oh, you know. So, and of course, as it turned out, Niels Bohr was right. Einstein was wrong. Because in the 1960s and 70s, when they had more modern equipment, a number of um, quantum physicists, quantum scientists, and etc., other scientists, I assume, um, checked again to see if physical particles are real or not. And they found out, no. The physical particles that make up matter, that make up your body, literally, scientifically, are not real. In 1981, another big experiment was done that not only proved this once again, but also proved that not only time and space aren't real, but separation isn't real either. So despite our senses, 3D reality is verifiably an illusion, a projection. So what is matter? Matter is actually slowed down energy. And because it is, that's really good news because that means that it's flexible and moldable. So if all matter is slowed down energy, 
that is flexible and moldable, how do we do it? How do we mold it? How do we think of it? Well, because the mind is taking the story that you have of yourself and your appearance and it's projecting that out. If you change the story of yourself, the projection must change. It is law. It is impossible for it not to. If you see yourself differently, it has to change your view of yourself, right? So, and the thing I like about this is that there is a story that's really cool that really shows how true this is. And literally that our mind has the ability to do this on the spot. Now, I looked this up before, and this is probably a couple of years ago, where there was a number of um, documented cases of people with multiple personalities changing not only their physical bodies, but their appearance on the spot. Now, I'll tell you what, if you try and look up those articles again, like I did the other day, they're pretty freaking hard to find. And I find that very interesting because now there's, instead, there's all these fact checker um, websites, you know, when I go to look this up, they come up and be like, oh, it's a common myth that people have that they heard somewhere. It's like, no, I saw the, I saw the, the actual documented proof of it already too late, which is interestingly enough been removed. And you might find that that actually happens a lot. There's a lot of stuff that's been taken off, but that's another story. So it's difficult to find those things. But you will find a lot of people talking about it on different things like Reddit and what have you. But um, basically what the articles that I saw were people who were like psychiatrists. So psychiatrists who that's what they did as a profession was they helped people who had multiple personalities. And the thing about a lot of people with multiple personalities, it seems that most of them, their trauma was um, sexually based, right? So going to the doctors whenever they had a doctor's appointment was kind of a big thing for them. So usually what would happen is their psychiatrist would agree to go along with them. And what the psychiatrist, and this is more than one, um, what they noticed was that I'm watching the person like right in front of me. And since this is a difficult kind of stressful situation from for them, what's happening is that most of the time they're changing from one personality to another in the doctor's office. But since they're in the doctor's office and we have equipment to check them, we're seeing the difference. So what would happen is that one of the personalities that would go through the little test and be like, yep, you got heart disease. They change personalities. They would test them again. No sign of heart disease. One of them would have diabetes. One of, would, one of them wouldn't. One of them was allergic to orange juice. One of them wasn't allergic at all. So, but it was more than that. It wasn't just the physical things, you know, inside. It was outside. Because they, they were like saying, look, I'm looking at this person. And when they're changing personality, personalities, um, they're literally, their physical appearance is shifting. Their eye color was changing on the spot. That is how powerful the mind is. Because when the mind makes this disassociation, because multiple personalities, when they change personalities, even though they're in the same body, they're like, well, that's not me. That's Jane. And I'm Sarah. And I don't have that problem at all. That's her. She can't see. She, her eyesight sucks. My eyesight is perfect. And which has also been documented um, that, you know, eyesight change in people with multiple personalities, which I was able to find some articles on. Um, so that shows the power of the mind to literally do things on the spot. And that's the power of your mind too. All of us, right? So if matter isn't real, matter isn't solid, matter isn't subject to the dictates of what we perceive as time and space and separation, well, that it's flexible, that it's moldable, right? So what that means is that we have the ability to change it, of course. So if our mind is showing us on the screen 
showing us right away what it what it thinks that we are, what we're telling it we are, what we believe that we are, that can be changed. So how do we go about without becoming multiple personalities, you know, having multiple personalities, how do we change that? Well, we do so by changing our thoughts, changing our beliefs, understanding all of this, and being persistent, being persistent in the new identity of the person. It's like, no, I'm not that. I am not that anymore. I am this, you know, um, changing how we think about ourselves. Because in order to change this projection, we have to take on the person that we want to be. It's literally like kind of wearing a suit, right? No, I'm, I look like this. Ignoring what reality says, ignoring what your mirror says, because your mind still got the old projection going on because it's used to that story. And when we insist, we're like, no, that story is not true. I'm not that person anymore. I am this person. And when we keep telling the mind, no, nope, wrong, 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 this, 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 then eventually it's like, okay, you know? So seeing yourself as that, right? Being persistent in that, ignoring what reality says, because reality is not real in the first place. So having that constant um, affirmation, that constant belief, seeing yourself, and you can tell yourself, I'm perfect. I am perfect. I am absolutely perfect. You know, seeing yourself has changed. Um, and there's a lot of people who've done this. So if you look at other YouTube things, if you look at the internet, you're going to see a lot of people who've, who have done this already. You know, me, myself, I've been doing this. Um, through that disassociation, I'm like, no, I'm not that person anymore. Because when I began this channel, I had my name as Piper Sky Cheyenne. And I'm like, no, I'm not Piper anymore. I'm literally not that person. And if you look at the beginning of the first things I did, which are the shorts that I did where I had blonde hair, I look pretty freaking different. Because I'm like, I'm not that person anymore. And I'm not. Because even my personality is changing. Because I, myself, I don't think that we have to die in order to become somebody else. And other people might think that you have to go through that process. But I don't believe that anymore. And certainly because they've already discovered, as I've spoken of a while ago, how to reverse aging. Absolutely true. How to not only reverse it, significantly i mean 70 to 80 percent reverse it they can even put you in a time loop of where you are 20 to 30 and then you reset to 20 years old again right so if that's true things we thought were impossible to change absolutely impossible to change but you can change all these other things but you can't change that because you're just going to die. And that was like the biggest belief, the one thing you couldn't change. And now that is scientifically, verifiably already done, already changed. So this is showing how flexible our reality actually is. That what we think is impossible isn't impossible in the slightest. So when you get to that mindset that like, no, if that's true, that aging is no long is off the table now then i can do anything i want and shifting your mind to that kind of belief you are now in your place of power so changing your appearance not an issue at all and when you integrate and know this stuff and you're like no i am right because i am right and you look up any of the facts Anyone, your mind included, who wants to argue with you, you're like, in your face, baby. <laughs> because, yeah, that's you. That is the truth of reality, and that is the truth of you. So, I am your host, Sky Cheyenne, and thank you for being with me here once again on Rebuild Reality, on this little bit of a longer version here. And thank you very much for subscribing, for liking, for sharing, and your wonderful, as always, comments. I like it all because reality can be really cool.